And so as happens in many fields of science, um, it took uh, a new community, other than the astronomers, to take a fresh look at the, at the expanding universe and realize something, there was some very interesting physics to be extracted. And so this was um, around 1949, when the community of nuclear physicists realized that the early Big Bang was a very interesting place. It was probably very hot, and so one can imagine um, it was a good place to test their theories of nuclear reactions, of thermonuclear reactions. And the pioneer was, um, in this was um, George Gamow. And um, Gamow, along with um, his student, um, Ralph Alpha, and a colleague, Robert Herman, um, argued that during the first few minutes, maybe half an hour, of the Big Bang, because that was the inference, we're expanding, there There was a very dense hot beginning, it was hot enough to have thermonuclear reactions so the protons could combine um, and form um, alpha particles, helium nuclei, and other elements too, they hoped. And so they argued that um, this then could happen, um, and one could explain the chemistry of the universe. Um, well, they were partly right and partly wrong, because what, what we know now is that the light elements, helium especially and others, heavy hydrogen, deuterium, lithium, these are almost certainly made in the first minutes of the universe. Um, and what is more, we can even understand how much is being made. We see helium you know, is 30 or 40% of the mass of the universe. It's very, very abundant. Stars burn by converting hydrogen to helium but they certainly haven't made that much helium. And so the Big Bang is the source of helium, and we know this now, but heavier elements cannot be made very easily. And the reason for that is that um, uh, there's a blockage when it comes to adding two helium nuclei together. You want to build up to carbon, which consists essentially of three helium nuclei. And in the Big Bang, there's, it's like climbing up a ladder, and one of the rungs is unstable, and you fall down, and that was mass, mass 8. Beryllium is an unstable isotope, very unstable. And so Gamow's dream failed, but he did go a long way to providing one of the major bits of evidence for the Big Bang, the light element abundances. And then there was one more very interesting piece of evidence that came out of this. Um, and this was due really to his student, Alpha. And so what Alpha realized was that, amazingly, um, if the universe was hot enough to make the helium, then it should be full of radiation. And the universe was like a perfect furnace. It was so dense early on. And today, that radiation should still be present. It should be what, be what we call black body radiation. And um, he, they went on to predict that today, this relic radiation should be approximately five degrees Kelvin. Okay, and this should be a relic of the Big Bang, like a fossil, okay. Now, they never really made the connection with experimental astronomy, um, and their work was largely forgotten, unfortunately, from 1950 onwards, um, until the Big Bang was rediscovered. I'll come to that in a second. As far as the elements of which we're made, we now believe that the Big Bang doesn't do the job, but massive stars do. So here's an example of what happens in a star that maybe is um, 20 times the mass of the sun. We see these stars, they're short-lived. We see them being born, we see them dying as supernovae. And before this star dies completely, it will make heavier and heavier elements to extract more energy, okay, eventually forming a core of iron which is inert. And then when you can get no more energy from the middle, everything collapses in a giant explosion, and that disperses all the other elements. And you see you make helium and carbon and so forth. And we basically uh, are the ashes, formed from the ashes on the Earth and even human beings, of exploding stars.